Waves just came out with a new version of Studio Rack. Now, the funny thing is that I made a video not too long ago on how I use a Studio Rack with the Waves NX Studio Collection without even knowing that a new version was at the door. I am actually very pumped right now because what's new in this version is actually a very cool feature. So let's take a look. Hey, what's going on? The Crystal Lim here from Mixdown Online. Now, if you want to speed up your mixing workflow, I have a free gift for you. It's a full training on how to create the perfect mix template. In this training, I show you how I built my own mix template to speed up my workflow. And I also include a Cubase mix template session that you can download to base yourself on to make your own mix template. So check it out. The link is down below. Okay, now let's jump right in Cubase and check this new version of Studio Rack. So now if you're new to Studio Rack, uh, it's a very cool plugin that you use as an insert straight on the channel, which is going to allow you to insert several plugins. So a maximum of eight extra plugins within that same plugin, uh, which is quite cool. Now, originally, you only had access to the Waves plugins you own. But now with this new version, which is part of um, Waves plugin version V14, this time around, you can use plugins outside of the Waves ecosystem, which is quite nice. So all VST3 plugins you have installed on your computer are going to be available within Studio Rack, which is going to bring this plugin to the next level. Okay, now let me just briefly show you what Studio Rack is. Uh, so I have the plugin open right now. I have my eight slots where I can insert any plugin. And now I have my Waves plugins on top here. And at the bottom, I have the VST3 uh, plugin list that I have on my computer, uh, which is quite cool because from this point on, I can use and work with my FabFilter plugins and that I like a lot. Uh, my Arouser compressor, which is an amazing one. Uh, Isotope plugins, um, you know, um, Leapwig Audio, uh, uh, plugin Alliance, which I'm a big fan of. Now I can use all those VST3 plugins, which is amazing. If you don't have access to some of your VST3 plugins, just go right here on top and go down to VST3. You'll be able to scan your plugins or even set up a specific VST3 plugin folder uh, to scan your plugins. So you insert the plugins of your choice. And on top of that, you can insert a parallel split, uh, which is going to add parallel processing for parallel compression or using a delay, a reverb, uh, saturation, and so on, which is going to work in parallel to the dry signal. And you also have access to a multiband split, which is great because this can add up to five bands uh, where you can insert uh, uh, several plugins. And on each bands or each parallel split channels, uh, you have access to eight extra inserts. So it's just like, you know, freaking crazy, you know? So the possibilities are actually endless. Uh, again, I'm gonna scratch the surface with uh, uh, this plugin and show you a bit of what can be done uh, with it uh, by using VST3 plugins. And then on the side, we have the macro which is actually pretty cool. So more on that in a moment. Uh, so what I'm gonna do here is to load a, um, a preset that I worked on earlier today. So let me load this one. So what I have on this one, I actually inserted the uh, an instance of a studio rack on a drum bus. So let's have a quick listen on what we're gonna work with. So that's the one. All right, so the first channel is a dry signal and then I have my parallel processing. And the first one is a compressor. It's an 1176 by Arturia. And then I have an EQ, a Boltec type EQ, if I bypass it. Pretty nice. Okay, now I added also a reverb. Let's do this again without the reverb, which is a Pro R by Fab filter. And I can blend the dry and wet signal straight from this fader right here at the bottom of each parallel channel, okay? Uh, which is quite nice. So if I bypass the whole thing, so 
So let me just bring this down a bit, a bit less reverb. Okay, let's look at the multiband split that I have here. I have four bands on this one. I can add up to five, but I'm just using four. Uh, and what I'm using for frequencies up to 92 Hertz is a compressor. Again, an 1176. And uh, let me add a EQ on top of that. So I'm gonna go down to VST3 and let's go with the, um, with the Plugin Alliance. The Mag EQ4. I'm gonna add a bit of uh, 40 hertz and some sub frequencies, and we'll see how that's gonna go. So let me bypass those extra plugins. I can actually solo the band if I want to. A bit more control on the low end, uh, which I like. And then I added something very cool, okay? An overdrive on the mid range uh, between 545 Hertz to 4K. And I'm using the Waves MDMX overdrive, uh, which is quite nice. So let's have a listen. If I bypass it. On top of that, let's add by Baby Audio, the Baby Comeback Delay. That's pretty cool. Okay, if I blend this with the rest. Now for the high frequencies, I added a stay level uh, tube compressor. Just to smooth things out. If I bypass the whole thing, Okay, so I'm gonna do something here just to balance things out. Um, so let's say I wanna, you know, have, I wanna get a bit more delay on uh, the multiband part of it, on the mid range, only on one part of the song, let's say the verse, for example, uh, and tame down the reverb and then automate this so the reverb uh, can go up for the choruses by bringing down at the same time the delay level. Uh, so what I can do here is to use a macro, and this is actually very powerful, okay? Now, if you use a Waves plugin, like for example, the uh, MDX plugin, this one is by Waves, I can simply right click on any parameters and uh, click on add macro and add this parameter to a macro of my choice. Uh, and this is good if you uh, work with a Waves plugin. Now, if you work with a VST3 plugin that is not a Wave plugin, uh, you won't be able to do it this way. So if I right click on, uh, let's go on the compressor here and I right click on the output, it's not gonna do anything. So what I need to do is to go straight on macro. This is one way to do it, is to go straight on the macro I wanna use and uh, look for the command I wanna assign to this macro. So in my case, I'm going into the multiband split channel and I'm looking for baby comeback. And then what I wanna do is to, let's go and uh, uh, work with the wet and out uh, level. Okay, so if I go back uh, to my baby comeback plugin and I play around with the macro, I'm just gonna bring down all, extend the window so I have access to uh, the plugin chain and also the macro. If I bring down and up macro one, I can see at the same time the wet and dry level of the, uh, the delay plugin, which is nice. Now, what I wanna do for uh, this one is I wanna click my pedal split and I wanna automate or assign to a macro uh, the fader level to balance the dry and wet signal of the fab filter reverb channel. So I'm gonna right click, click on add macro and macro one. Now, 
by bringing up and down that macro, that is gonna bring up and down the um, wet and dry uh, level of the reverb and also at the same time, bring up and down the wet and dry level of the, uh, the delay. But what I wanna do is I wanna do the opposite. Uh, when one is going up, I want the other to come down, okay? So what I'm gonna do is right click on macro one, click on edit macro. So I have the paddle split right here and uh, I have the multiband baby, uh, baby comeback delay on the second uh, listed here. So what I'm gonna do here is to reverse uh, this one. So by reversing that, uh, it's gonna do the opposite, you know? So if I bring down the reverb, it's gonna bring up the delay and vice versa. Uh, and then I'm just gonna readjust a few things here. So I'm just gonna bring down the minimum level. Let's go with uh, 135%. And uh, let me bring up the minimum level to, you know, minus 25 or something. Let's go with that to start with. So I can tell the Studio Rack what minimum level I want for these two plugins. So now if I bring my macro down, now the delay is going up. And at the same time, uh, you can see that my uh, parallel channel is going down, okay? So this is exactly what I want. Uh, now what I'm gonna do next is, uh, I'm, work, I'm working Cubase Pro 12, so I can actually assign uh, this one. If I just uh, click on the quick controls here, uh, I can activate this one and uh, use my knob here from my nano control that I have right here at the bottom, and that is right here in front of me, and use that first knob to control macro one which is awesome. Okay, so let's have a quick listen. That's actually pretty cool. Now, it's not necessarily something uh, that I would do on this mix, uh, but it's just to show you the possibilities of uh, things you can do with this plugin by only scratching the surface of it, you know, because you can go deeper if you want to. The possibilities are endless. Uh, and now that we can use uh, uh, plugins that are not Waves plugins, so we're not limited to only the Waves plugins we own, uh, but we also have access to all VST plugins installed on our computers makes this plugin even more useful when mixing. So check it out. Again, it's a free plugin by Waves. The link is down below. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Until next time, take care and see you.